Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. Our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes, autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept, in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. And we are so thrilled to be offering one of the first of its kind, digital, virtual, and continuous learning environments, enabling parents and children to connect from all around. The world. At Project Purpose, our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others, with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education play a role and have played a role in our societies at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are part particularly keen on the topic, we also write thought pieces every other Sunday and we actually just dropped a thought piece this past Sunday. So be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. If it is the case that you are out and about and on the go, then take us along with you. We are available on 10 different podcast platforms for your listening leisure and we've provided you with access to the links in the description down below. Now, as is the convention, be sure to subscribe hit that post notification bell so that you are aware of every time we post. And of course, if you like these conversations and you want to keep them going, like, comment, and share this segment. Let's get into it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another segment here on Project Purpose. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week-by-week -week basis. And this week, our topic of discussion is education. And on the topic of education, we're going to be talking about how perspectives drive intellectual development and how when we push the needle on broadening our perspective and expanding our capacity to perceive things in different ways, we're also nourishing and developing ourselves intellectually. And so I wanna have the conversation here and it's going to be a colloquial, informal conversation and just the impact of perspective. And I think that when we think about perspective, we take for granted what plays into the perspectives that people carry in the world around us. And the fact that there are so many different perspectives, it's very multifaceted. And a lot of what drives perspective, obviously, is perception, and perceptions are driven by our sensory percepts, our sensory system. And it is really the collective of these perceptions, right? So the fact that we can mirror and we can articulate our perceptions and have other people perceive things in similar ways or have sort of similar experiences of the world around them that we reach agreement. And in reaching agreement, we take the perceptions that we have, we cultivate them into perspective. So the world influences our sense of you know our positioning whether that's positioning on who we are as individuals on our family settings on family structures on what success looks like and what achievement looks like and what beauty is all of this is influenced by perception and perception is something that is mostly beyond a realm of control it is what takes place with the relay between our sensory system and the world around us but we are the ones who influence our perspective to a greater extent and when i say we i mean more so as adults as children a lot of it is coding and conditioning right it is how they are provided with narratives and provided with different discourse and points of views on what it is that perception is sort of providing them by way of information we're the ones sort of aligning that perception to language and from language we're allowing them and enabling them to cultivate perspectives so different ways of thinking and ways of viewing the world around us and that's largely based on the way that we formalize beliefs around the things that we're perceiving and I like to talk about this because a lot of us we take for granted but if we were very
very intentional about how we allow our perceptions to build into perspectives and looking to always find expansion by way of how our perceptions build into perspectives and we give ourselves an opportunity to see the world through many different lenses. And that's important because recognize that what it is that you're perceiving, the way that that's aligning to your language is really going to shift and influence the perspectives that you take. And a lot of us, we push the needle and we push back on perspectives that were taken in the past. So ways of viewing, ways of seeing, ways of cultivating those things into beliefs, belief patterns, into ideals. That shifts and changes when we have different narratives that align with the perceptions that we are taking and that we are building collective ideals around. And a part of how that takes place is education. And I've mentioned in a few videos, my sense in education is that it starts at home. And I believe in self-directed education as well. And I also believe in an education that provides us with the baseline to cultivate critical thinking. So not just education on, you know, how to do functions, not just functional education, but also education that influences perception. And I think that that's the kind of education that's a little bit more nuanced and that we take for granted a lot of the time. Like we assume if we're not learning how to function within a specific capacity, that that education has less of a return on investment. But I find that the education that gives us a more rich view and understanding of the world around us and rich by way of if we from the point of view that we had initially, could only really see things from two sides. If we enrich that perspective, if we enrich that point of view, then now we're expanding our ability to take multiple positions on that point of view, or we are expanding our at least our ability to see why someone would take different perspectives and different positions on that point of view. And I think that's really what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the importance of focusing on enriching your perspectives by being more intentional about the perception that circulate around you and being more intentional about what you take in and what you allow to influence your beliefs and what you challenge. And I think that a lot of us have a hard time challenging dominant ideals. So dominant perspectives on the ways of being and the ways of engaging with one another or even dominant ideals on education, on parenting. I mean, there's so many dominant ideals floating around and a lot of them are problematic because we haven't really been taught to challenge the dominant ideal, the dominant narrative being pushed. We kind of just let it bulldoze us and I think that if you want to cultivate the confidence to push against the dominant ideal because there's something within you that like knows that there's another way of looking at it though you don't know what way specifically and you focus on again enriching and providing yourself with an opportunity to take on alternate perspectives and that involves just being much more aware of what information you're taking in or at least giving yourself the opportunity to take on different information from the information that is readily available to you and that's really the point of our conversation and education today is recognizing that there are always alternative means of informing your sense of the world around you. And I do believe in formal education. I do believe that there are certain fundamentals that we all need as a baseline in order to be able to build on top of that. But I think that if we're cognizant <laughs> that we have the fundamentals in place, then recognize that the dominant narrative isn't the only narrative. There are alternative points of view and much of what it is that we have conversations about, whether that's in an academic setting or, you know, at a coffee chat or at a cocktail party, they're subject for review or they're subject to evolve into alternate and different perspectives and different points of view. And all of us have within us the ability to influence those perspectives and the ability to influence those points of view or the evolution of those points of view or the shifts and changes in those narratives if we take the opportunity to recognize what it is that is currently influencing our perspectives now and how we can make those shifts with intention. And so I don't want to like continuously push that point, but I do want to make sure that we all understand that not everything that is readily available is readily available for altruistic means, right? Information has value, it comes at a cost. And if you're finding that the information that you're leveraging to influence your perspective is largely free, then recognize that there's a political agenda there. And it's hard to think critically, it's hard to develop your own sense of viewing the world around you but a lot of what it is that you're taking in so a lot of what you're feeding yourself is building into a pool of propaganda a bit of a propaganda pool so i do think that what i love about formal education is that we learn how to take information and strip 
down a lot of the ideals, the agendas, the politics in the way that that information is packaged and presented in a way where we can look at the information sort of in a silo and then decide where it fits for us. So decide how it fits across our ideals, our perspectives and our own personal agendas. And I think all of us have a personal agenda and it could be a passive agenda, it could be an active agenda, but we wanna make sure that we are very cognizant of the narratives that are influencing our own agenda, our own sense of being, our own sense of how the world itself is evolving and how we we can build into that evolution by being just more cognizant of what influences our own perspectives and not take the influence on our perspective for granted. And the way that we take our, the influences on our perspectives for granted is by not questioning where these perspectives come from. So sometimes like I'm in conversation and you know people are providing a point of view or they're challenging my point of view. And when I push back on like why they carry that point of view, it seems like it came out of nowhere. And I'm like, no, like sometimes people carry like counterculture narratives that are dominant counterculture narratives, right? And just because it is countering the dominant narrative, it's in and of itself is problematic. And a lot of the dominant narratives are problematic. A lot of the counter commentary is also problematic as well. And, and sometimes we are so focused on taking a view against the dominant narrative that we find ourselves being kind of pulled and conditioned into a more propagandic perspective or point of view. And I'm really here to say like, you know, just because it's counter dominant culture doesn't mean it's more right. I think that we need to realize that right and wrong, especially in a domain as complicated as like a social collective domain. I mean, it's, it's really hard to have a conversation with someone who needs to look at these narratives from a vantage point of right and wrong. There's a lot of relativity. And I think that it's about betterment, right? It's about iterations and little adjustments that make it so that it's closer to an ideal. And when I say an ideal, it's closer to a narrative that supports the majority of people, at least that's the way I consider ideal. It's, it's less of a zero sum game. And I think a lot of us don't really know how to build arguments that aren't zero sum. I, I think it's hard, it's hard for a lot of us to take stock of how our perspectives themselves have been influenced. And I'm someone like, I know what's influenced my perspectives and I know what about my perspectives are subject to change or subject to evolution as well. And I know which parts of my perspectives are fairly concretized at this stage in point. Right, Like I've done a lot that I can do personally to find alternative positions and I feel really comfortable with the position that I've taken at this point, though I'm always open for rebuttal, right? And I think that for those of us who are looking to have progressive conversations, looking for conversations, not just to be heard, but to have what it is that we're saying influence action, then we, we need to just have a bit of an open mind by way of how that translates and also recognize like what it is that is influencing our perspectives to begin with. And I think that that was the point of this conversation, I think. A lot of us have positions and we don't really have a sense of how those positions have been informed or what informed those positions or what could further evolve or build into those positions moving forward. And I think that that's something that all of us need to own, right? I think it's something that we all have a responsibility to own as we build and contribute to narratives that hopefully will build into the progression of our collective societies and just acceptance and more tolerance and inclusion to different perspectives and positions and recognizing that everything, everything has, you know, a, a, a pro and con. Like there are benefits to at least being able to take on alternate points of view and not seeing the world. There's a black and white conclusive way. So that was the point of this conversation on education. I think it's really just about helping people recognize that it's important to recognize what is fueling and what is feeding your perspectives and your points of view in the world around you. And if you don't know what is fueling your perspectives, if you're not really quite sure why you have such strong positions on certain things or why you're not at least giving yourself an opportunity to be part of narratives and conversations that challenge your perspective, to see things differently. This is sort of the call to do that, to make sure that what it is that you stand for, the hills that you're ready to die on are like hills that are well-informed, integrative, and the other belief systems that you have. And you know, if you've done your work, you've done the due diligence by way of making sure that you're clear, you're clear in how you've reached this point, you're clear in like, how this point could evolve moving forward or what would influence the evolution or what conversations you need to have or you know what information you need to also give yourself access to or expose yourself to that 
could just shift and change those perspectives and looking to have those perspectives shift and change. Like even for the beliefs that I have that are fairly concretized, I'm always open to putting myself in a position where I have access to information that can influence the growth or the shift of those perspectives and those beliefs. That was the crux of the point that I really wanted to make today. And I think it is an important point and I'm, I'm speaking of it lightly, but I think it's like super important for intellectual development and also for character to development because I think that our perspectives do feed into our character. It feeds into the way that we see the world around us, the way that we engage with the world around us as well. It's an important point to make. In any case, that is it for today. But before letting you go, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that we will be going live at least twice a month, every month for the foreseeable future on our Facebook page. So definitely be sure to tune into that. And these events are paid events. Though if you do see yourself participating in our community on an ongoing basis, then I suggest that you take a look at our package plans, which give you unlimited access to our live events, as well as access to our workshops and webinars over and above those live events. So we have that for you. In the event that you want to take part and participate in our Game Changer community, if you're still here, you like what we were talking about, so definitely subscribe and follow us on all of our social media channels on our website just as well. And we look forward to chatting with you very soon.